It's Clarissa Burt and welcome to Tend the Envelopment Network. This is a place where women come to learn about other women and how to look good, feel good, be good, and live their greater good. And I am starting my very first show with a very, very good friend of mine. And I really couldn't think of anybody better to come in and sit and tell us about how to look great, feel good, be good and live a greater good than Sharon Lecter. So thanks so much for being here. This means so much to me. I know how busy you are. And oh, by the way, if you ever stop to read the bio, you know what I'm talking about. Sharon looked at me she said, just before. She said, you're not going to read that whole bio, are you? I said, no, but I need to take some notes somewhere because how do you do it all? How have you done all the amazing things that you've done? Starting with way back in the day. I mean, well, I know you from, let's say I know you from the um, Napoleon Hill Foundation. Mm -hmm. So Three Feet from Gold with Greg Reed, and then you did, um, recently you did Outwitting the Devil, which you'll tell us about, because I love the story behind that. And then, thank you so much for including me in your last book, which is Think and Grow Rich for Women. So how do you do it? How do you, I, mean, I can't even, I'm telling you how long I want to write a book. Can't get it out. Three books in a year, how do you do that? Um, too many. The resume is that long, Clarissa, <laughs> because I'm this old. Oh, so that's let's, not, you know, let's, well, let's tell the truth. I'm right here. behind you. <laughs> I didn't know until you just said it that I'm your first show, so yes. I'm like honored. I'm almost oh, speechless, but of you. course, seldom am I speechless. So <laughs> I'm, I'm excited about being here, and I'm excited about what you're doing, Thanks. and I think every one of us will benefit from sharing and caring, and most importantly, just having the dialogue, having the conversation. Right. So thank you for doing the show. Well, you're really welcome, and thanks for, again for coming. So starting back with Three Feet from Goal, mm -hmm. I know that you were called by the Napoleon Hill Foundation, big deal, huge deal, to come in and sort of help with some of the literary works that they wanted to put out, and they put you in charge. I know you brought in Greg, our good friend Greg Reed, and you did Three Feet from Goal. Mm -hmm. That was an, an amazing uh, success. After which, there are some transcripts that are sort of in the archives, hiding somewhere that nobody knew about. And even the same Napoleon Hill family would not allow to be published back in the, I'm going to say, 40s? Am I correct when I said? 1938 is when he, when he okay. wrote it. Mm -hmm. So you take over. Tell us about that. Well, the whole concept of working with the Napoleon Hill Foundation, I read Think and Grow Rich when I was 19. And it came out, it was published in 1937, and it really truly is the quintessential work in success by Napoleon Hill. It was his life's mission. He spent over 25 years working on Think and Grow Rich. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's so powerful is that it's not one man's philosophy about success. He interviewed the top 500 of most successful men of his time because back then the only bastions of business were men. And it was Carnegie's idea, Andrew Carnegie's idea. Yes, Andrew Carnegie was the richest man in the world right. and he said, I know all my rich friends mm -hmm. and we all follow a formula. Somebody needs to write and share this formula. And hence, Napoleon Hill literally went on a 25 year mission interviewing all of these people and thousands of people who considered themselves failures as well. Right. And from that, he synthesized 13 steps to success and release it in Think and Grow Rich. And so Think and Grow Rich is really the quintessential work on success. It's as valid today mm -hmm. as it was when it was released in 1937. Translated into how many languages? Oh, over 50 languages. So and over the whole 120 world was countries able, right. around so the country. You know, you know, around talk the globe. about global, you know, going global. I think he did it a long time before yes. it was even thought of. And, then, so, and so many of you probably know me from the Rich Dad Poor Dad series. So right. I read Think and Grow Rich. It got me onto the journey and I got into financial education, wrote Rich Dad Poor Dad in 1997, which started a 10 year journey. And the reason I bring it up is I, for those of you watching, sometimes you have to close a door in your life for other doors to open. I told you I read Think and Grow Rich when I was 19. I'm at the top of success with the Rich Dad Company in 2007, but I was no longer aligned with my partners. So I made the very difficult decision to lose, to, to leave a very successful company. Mm -hmm. And I did that kind of like, girlfriend, what are you doing? Yeah. This is crazy. But it was the right decision for me. Had I not made that decision, I would not have gotten the call from Don Green asking me to step into the largest personal development brand. My, what got me started with Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, and right. to be able to reinvigorate that, because we all know what happened in 2008 with the right. economy, right. it went upside down. Mm -hmm. And they said, we, a lot of people under the age of 50 don't even know who Napoleon Hill Please. is. 
Yep. And so I was given that well, great mission. Well, they don't know who mission. Bob Hope is either. Right. <laughs> I know. Isn't that sad? Just thought I'd throw that in That's there. Sad. That's sad. It really is. <laughs> oh, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Or how about gun smoke? Oh, you know? I know. We could be here all day on that <laughs> subject. But So what prompted you then to take a look around and say, wait a minute, we need to be doing a book here for women, thinking for yeah. which for women. Was it the glass ceiling? What, what, what was well, it? Well, a lot of it. There's two major reasons I wrote Thinking Grow Rich for Women. One is to change the dialogue. For many years in my career, I was re resisted doing a book for women because I said, you know, the steps to success are the same, and I still feel that way. But I realized in the last few years that the steps to success are the same, but the way we approach those steps are very different, depending on if we're a man or a woman. Right. And so I wanted to honor the original Think and Grow Rich, mm -hmm but look at it from the perspective and through the eyes of successful women. So the Think and Grow Rich for Women, the book, follows the same chapter outline as the original Think and Grow Rich. Each chapter honors Napoleon Hill by sharing his philosophy. And then I look at that step through the eyes of successful women. Then I share how I've applied that particular principle in my own career path. And then I do with the Sisterhood Mastermind, where I go out and I find women like you, Thank you. <laughs> who have wisdom and have shared it and made a difference in other people's lives. And I create a, a really almost a library of quotes for each of those principles from women of history, women of education, mm -hmm. young women just starting, women of C that are CEOs, women of phil philanthropy. Yeah. I wanted to show the incredible I'm show imprint. this book a little bit better, only because there is not one really, really important woman that is not in this book. I went through this book, I read it this weekend, I'm sorry, I'm a little late, a little hard <laughs> behind because I'm starting up a network, but it's all good. And. Um, and, um, and thank you for, you know, I'm in it, I'm, I'm in it, I, I love you for that. But the, the names that are in here, I, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm in the same book with some of these women, just powerhouses, I mean, global names. So well, and that was you. the desire. We have over 300 women in the book. And it's really my number one desire was to change the dialogue from women complaining about the glass ceiling, complaining about stuff that's just, right. it, it's true. But let's not look at it from complaining. Let's acknowledge and, con and celebrate the progress that has been made. So Absolutely. my goal is to change the dialogue from complaining to celebrating women. Right. And one of your major goals that I know about, and, and, and that you not only did you, you got um, a, a board game out called mm -hmm. Thrive Time for Teens that obviously mm -hmm. won a thousand awards because, you know, you don't do anything unless she's winning a bunch of awards, but well. Uh, and, then, and then you did some really, really great work for the President's Advisory Council on Financial Literacy. So both under Bush and Obama, you've, I know that you've been to, I've seen the pictures of the Oval House, you know, the Oval <laughs> Room of the White House, and we know, we know I'm, I, I'm so proud, I boast every time I see that. But give, me, give us a little background as to what it's like to stand with the Prez in the Oval Room at the White House. Well, it's a huge honor, and I do have that picture of me, and I, and I share that picture really for one reason. Of all of these incredibly powerful, wonderful people, all dedicated to financial education, I was really the only one in the room that was a true entrepreneur and still trying to build new companies and support people. And I really believe the basis of our country was built on entrepreneurship, free markets, free enterprise, free people. And today, I believe all of those are being threatened. And so I really want to stand at the mountaintop and scream, let's get back to our founding father principles and become a country again of free speech, free people, free markets, and free enterprise. And that's what's going to get us out of the economic situation that we're all in today. Um, Sharon, amongst the other accolades, you're, in a, you're on a plethora of boards. And one of them is with a very good friend of ours, uh, Michelle Robson, and empowher.com. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that you ha you all have been doing a tour with your book recently, mm -hmm. uh, and we could be here with Child Help and, and, and the lovely ladies over at Child Help that we all love and adore. Uh, you're on the board there. Many other boards, I don't want to leave any of the important ones out, but um, unless you want to expand on some of those, uh, what it's like working, you know, on all, how do you get the time, I guess, is what I really the question is, to be doing this all. Well, as we've come full circle, it's really the issue for women is we are all well-rounded, we're multitaskers, and so to try and just talk about money when they're trying to do all these other things, I really have understood, and what we've seen as we've gone around with the book, the incredible response we've had from folks, is that what women want to be addressed about all facets of their life. And like the last chapter in the book is the only chapter that's not in the original Think and Grow Rich, One Big Life. And so when you talk about those various boards, Empower is the largest yeah. um, online web resource for women's health issues. Mm -hmm. And really women, a lot of us who concentrate on wealth end up sacrificing our health. 
And so it's like, okay, we need to really talk about and have that conversation mm -hmm. about when we are the future. Uh, Warren Buffett last year said that, you know, the greatest investment tool of the future is women and understanding the impact that we're going to have in the economy. Right. And so it's up to us to take care of ourselves so that we can be better entrepreneurs, better mothers, better partners, better wives. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's the message, is that we really need to have the dialogue about the con incredible influence and impact that women can have to create significant change in our communities. All right, so girlfriends are leaving for China, and I want to hear all about it. So what are we doing in China? Well, I'm very excited. <laughs> One of the other boards that I'm on is the Women Presence Organization, which... Like, what I tell you? Did I tell you? <laughs> I, I don't know how she does it all. All right, go ahead. Tell us about it. Go ahead. China, China. So I'm honored to represent the Women Presence Organization at the Shanghai International Women's Federation meeting. That'll be at, you know in the end of September, and I've been to China several times. Um, and I know Michelle's going with you. So yes, Michelle's going. going with me. So we're very excited about it. But again, it's the the dialogue may be in different languages, but our concerns, our hopes, our dreams are all the same. We want the future to be much more secure for ourselves, for our families. We want our children to be successful. And so the dialogue needs to be a global dialogue. So I applaud you what you're doing because the more we can get out there and reach them through the online television networks, we have the opportunity to create global change. And it's up to each and every one of us to not only encourage it, but to continue the di dialogue. You know, here at the Envelopment Network, you know, as people say, why, what that, what's that word? Well, you know, we had heard so much about personal development for so many years that I thought, wow, isn't that kind of cool for women just to go, personal envelopment, to start with the love of self and the importance of looking mm -hmm. good, feeling good, which is diet, exercise, nutrition, mm -hmm. being good, thought processes, and giving back through greater good. So we end every interview here um, every interview that I've ever done here at the Envelopment Network, we end with enveloping. So, oh, let's get a, love a hug. I love you more. <laughs> Thank you so much oh, for coming. Thank you. you know how much I adore My you. My delight. Thank I'm you so honored. much to Sharon Lecter for being here on the Envelopment Network. We'll see you next time.